This recording is going to cover um, muscle tissue predominantly and just a little bit about nervous tissue. Muscle tissue and nervous tissues are two of your primary tissue types, the other two types being epithelial tissues and connective tissues. Now muscle tissues, we have three types, all are somehow designed to be contractile. So when they contract, they're designed to cause something to say move. So we're going to do look at the um, three types and first type we're going to look at is what you see here is called skeletal muscle. The second type is cardiac muscle and the last type is smooth muscle. And actually to be I should always put muscle at the end because it's very important to have full names of tissues. So we have three muscle types. So the first one we look at is skeletal muscle. So what, and just so you know, the, the, the pictures that you're gonna see are always a longitudinal cut. So we're gonna look at it like this and not this view here. So first one is skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle have very long, thin cells that refer to as fibers. And they are multinucleated which means it has more than one nucleus per cell. And you'll notice here, you don't even see the entire muscle cell. These skeletal muscle cells or fibers are fairly large and they have a lot of nuclei. And you see the nuclei here and here and here. And those nuclei are peripherally located. So on the outside of the cell. So you see them in the outskirts. And so here you see all the nuclei in the, the purple are the nuclei. What you'll also notice if you look very carefully, you can see it here, the lines, and you can see the lines here, is they have a regular arrangement of these myofilaments referred to as actin and myosin. And so it appears, gives the appearance of being striated. So it possesses striation. So it's a striated muscle. We'll talk about the uh, muscle physiology. We'll go more in depth about that actin and myosin at a later date. Now, skeletal muscle functions a number of different ways. Okay, it's called skeletal muscle because of its attachment to your skeleton, but it's not every skeletal muscle is attached to bone, though, so I do have to admit there. So, some of the functions you see here is the old muscle man, it moves the bones of the skeleton. So, you contract, say, um, your biceps brachii muscle, that's going to allow me to flex my elbow. Um, it also is a component of this muscle and this muscle, the external and uh, urethral sphincter and the external anal sphincter. And these are muscles that control the exit of urine and feces. So they're going to control, you know, entrances and exits because they're, they're, they're part of what we call, um, in this case, this, these are voluntary muscles though. I'll mention that in a second. It also is part of your diaphragm. So here's the diaphragm here, which is your primary muscle for inspiration, so involved in breathing. It also, it actually, when it contracts, it changes the volume of your thoracic cavity, which allows you to um, inhale. Another thing it's involved in is you have these extrinsic muscles of the eye, which you see at least five of them here. This muscle here, this one, that one, that one, and the only one we're missing is something called the medial rectus muscle. These muscles you'll learn about when we look at the anatomy of the eye. These allow you to move the eyeball. Look up, look down, rotate your eye. So it's, so it's involved in a number of different things. These are all skeletal muscles, and all skeletal muscles are considered to be voluntary muscles. You can consciously control pretty much those muscles say so you look up, you're gonna look up. Um, and they're actually, and here you can see the little skeleton muscle here, they're actually controlled by, in case you can't see it, by the somatic nervous system. Skeletal muscle cannot contract unless the somatic nervous system tells it to. So it needs nervous system input in order for it to contract. Now the second type of muscle tissue is cardiac muscle. Now cardiac muscle, the cells appear branched. And what you'll see is you'll see a one nucleus per cell 
and they're centrally located. Another term they'll say is they're uninucleate instead of multinucleated. They also, what's kind of very characteristic of cardiac muscle is the presence of these things here. These are referred to as intercalated discs. This slide has been specially stained to help pick up the intercalated disc a little bit better. And so I'm going to just go over them in like kind of a gold color. So you see one here and here and there, um, there, there. So they're like kind of attaching, um, you know, more than one, you know, one cell to the other, but they're actually composed up of something called desmosomes, which help to kind of keep the cells from pulling apart. Plus, also, they have gap junctions. And those gap junctions allow ions to move from cell to cell very quickly, which is important when we talk about contraction in, in the heart. Now, cardiac muscle is only located in the heart. So cardiac, if you hear the term cardiac, it has to do with the heart, pertains to the heart. So that heart will contract and be able to move blood up either to the lungs or to the rest of your body. Sorry. So this muscle is involuntary. So I don't know where it, I, I stopped it and I can't remember where I stopped it. Did I hit the stop button? It is control, can be influenced by the autonomic nervous system. So cardiac muscle can contract on its own because it has these pacemaker cells. However, the autonomic nervous system can influence heart rate as well as contractility. The heart also can be influenced by hormones, say like thyroid hormones, um, epinephrine, norepinephrine, so it can be influenced by other things. The last type of muscle is smooth muscle. So smooth muscle tissue is here, this, this cells are spindle shaped cells and they have one nucleus and they're centrally located. Now with this one, you don't see, oh, I've got to go back here real quick, sorry. With the cardiac muscle, you do have striations, okay? So I do want to mention that the, the cardiac muscle is striated because it has a regular arrangement of actin and myosin. Sorry, I didn't mention that. Now, smooth muscle is not striated. It does have actin and myosin, but there's not regularly arranged, so it ha lacks striation, so it's not striated. It appears smooth. Now, there are more than one type of, of smooth muscle tissue, but the um, the smooth muscle you're going to find in a number of different places. So this lines your your GI tract, so your esophagus, which you see right here, um, the intestines, which you see here. It helps to move, propel food material through it. It's part of your um, lines the the urinary tract. So here, like here's the ureter. So it's going to move urine down towards the bladder. You see part of the bladder sticking out there. When the smooth muscle of the bladder contracts, it helps to expel urine from the body. Um, it's also part of the reproductive tract. It also lines blood vessels. So you can see some blood vessels here. That will help to control blood flow because it changes the diameter of the vessel. Um, it help, will be involved in blood pressure control. It's also a component of sphincters too. But here, so here you can see some um, smooth muscle here. So it's actually part of what we call the tunica media of some of your blood vessels. Capillaries do not have um, muscle. The, uh, it's also, it's going to be, um, say it controls exits and entrances. But here it's actually a component of the iris. So the iris is like that pigmented part of your eye, but the iris actually has two muscles, which are smooth muscle. They control how big your pupils are. So this controls the amount of light that enters your eye. The smooth muscle is actually part of, is um, component of what we call your ciliary body, which encircles the lens of your eye and it can change the shape of the lens, which will be um, needed if you're looking at something from, from a distance or up close. So it's also, um, those are smooth muscles. It is also part of other sphincters, and previously I mentioned the external um, anal and urethral sphincter, but we have internal anal 
and internal urethral sphincters. Those are smooth muscle. Those are involuntary. And those also will help control whether or not feces go out or urine goes out. But the external ones are under voluntary control. These are involuntary. So control of this, it's involuntary. But the, the smooth muscle is also does not need the nervous system for it to be able to contract, but it can be influenced by the autonomic nervous system, just like the cardiac muscle. It can also be influenced by things like stretch. If you stretch a smooth muscle, it automatically contracts and hormones. And we'll go over those at a, at a later date. But So it can be a number of different things that can influence the contractile state. A smooth muscle. Now last thing I want to mention is nervous tissue. Now nervous tissue going to go a lot more in depth when we do the nervous system but here's a slide of a smear of neurons and what these are what you see here is multipolar neurons. So you see these here are the neurons and what you see here are these little dots they're actually the nuclei of neuroglia. You have a lot more neuroglia which are supporting cells for uh, the neurons um, than you do neurons themselves. So the thing is neurons, or I should say nervous tissue, is designed to be excitable. They're gonna be controlling things in your body, but they're also involved in, in learning a number of different um, things. And so we're gonna do that a little bit more in depth when you do nervous system. So I just wanted to show you an example of kind of what nervous tissue looks like. So this is actually a slide of some, a smear of multipolar neurons.